welcome to the Piedmont Triad Podcast. Before I get too old, I'm gonna head down to Muscle Shoals, baby, you can meet me at station. Welcome to another episode of the Piedmont Triad Podcast, where we explore the strange and more unusual people and places of the Piedmont Triad area of North Carolina. I'm your host, David Locklear. And today we're talking with Sarah Schindler and Tuesday Leroy, the mother-daughter team who own and operate the Dabble Art Bar in Winston-Salem. Dabble Art Bar is a place where you can indulge your artistic muse, no matter what medium you prefer or what level of artistic expertise you have. Sarah and Tuesday are there to provide you with the tools and the supplies. You just need to show up with inspiration and maybe bring a friend or two. And today they talk to us about the growing pains of exploring their identity as a new business, the relief from anxiety that art can sometimes provide, and the time that they were at the South by Southwest Festival in Texas and got to hang out at friggin' Willie Nelson's ranch. Hell yeah! I'll go ahead and introduce you. Well, actually, I'll let you guys introduce yourselves. Uh, so, uh, Sarah, you go ahead. Okay. Hi, I'm Sarah Schindler, and I'm co-owner of Dabble Art Bar here in Winston-Salem. And I am Tuesday, or Tues, Leroy, also co-owner of Dabble Art Bar. Okay, so Dabble Art Bar. Um, explain what the concept is behind Dabble Art Bar. Well, uh, the concept of Dabble is essentially to provide people with a very casual, approachable way to engage with creativity and artistic mediums without having like the pressure of I'm signing up for a workshop or, um, you know, or I have to like get all these supplies and learn how to do something. It's really about providing a different way for, you know, adults especially to play on a on a day-to-day basis okay and how long have you said i'm sorry how long has dabble art bar been open it's been about six months we the we were doing something else with the space before then but opened the art bar and relaunched as dabble in september of 23 Right, it's twenty. It's twenty twenty four. Yeah, twenty three. Yes. Um. Yes. And so to expand a little bit on what Tues was saying, because you know, the idea of art bar is like pretty new. So, just um, like logistically, how it works is we have a menu of creative offerings. People come in and they pick something off the menu that they want to do. Like like you'd order a drink at a bar here. You're <clears throat> you can order creative materials. Um, you pick a spot where you want to sit and then just hang out for a couple hours and do a self-led activity. We are here to help answer questions and guide you along as needed, but to choose this point is really about to encourage play and just, you know, not judging ourselves and having fun. So we have um, a daily menu that includes watercolor, drawing, collage, coloring and stamp carving stamp carving and air dry clay and then different points throughout the year we'll have seasonal menus you know do fun things for christmas or we just had some things for valentine's day so um you know just kind of like keep it fresh and give people a new way to enjoy various holidays yeah so you said it was a, a different space before what were you doing mm-hmm. with this space before it became the art bar well it was um originally well originally going way back i had uh, leased it for another business that I was working on and coming off of COVID, it you know, became clear it wasn't really worth, it didn't make sense to continue to invest in that business, but I already had the space. So um, I'm an artist and like studied art in college, but then had a career in marketing and advertising. So I was like, well, I already have this spot. Maybe I'll kind of like go back to my roots and use it as my own studio space. And then I said, well, it's large enough. I could have a little shop and maybe sell some things. And then the next step was, well, maybe should open up for workshops. Um, And there's a, so we were doing organized workshops that were like ticketed and scheduled. And, but it was just kind of limiting, you know, trying to figure out like what people want to do, what days work best for them. You know, how do we market like each one of these different events? What's the right price point? And then on top of that, you know, uh, either... We would have to, because, you know, we are dabblers. That's kind of 
part of where the name comes from. Um, so with these different workshops, we'd either have to learn how to do everything, source all of the materials and, and, and all of that, and like plan instructions for people, or find someone else, another artist or professional in the area to lead these workshops, which then, you know, we have to make sure that these artists are properly compensated for what they're, you know, contributing to these workshops. And it just became, it was unsustainable and, um, yeah. yeah. And it just seemed like there's got to be a better way. And then um, a friend and mentor of mine sent me a profile. I was like, oh, I think you might be interested in this. And it was this group up in New York called Happy Medium. And they have a creative space. That, and they do a lot of different things. But one of the things they offer is um, like an art cafe concept where you can go in and, you know, order different activities. Like, oh, my gosh. That concept, that construct makes so much sense. So... Um, you know, we took and really kind of like made it our own and did it our own way. And, and especially like in the aesthetic of Dabble is very much like bar, coffee house, kind of vibey hang space. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, wanting to have that kind of comfort and familiarity um, and then marrying that with a creative thing. We also do um, like experience enhancers, like bringing in live music or DJs, and we're going to do some more of that this year so that it's like you come in, you know, just things that um, enrich the creative experience and being in the space. Right, yeah. And so your background is, uh, I'm assuming, a a very artistic background. Tuesday was telling me this was, uh, you know, art was sort of a a way to help cope with, uh, say, some social anxiety and whatnot, which... Weirdly enough, I have, and yet I choose something where I'm always interacting with people. Yeah. That doesn't make yeah. any sense. But, <laughs> yeah. but it sounds I like that's, that. you know, yeah. sort of where you were coming from in a way, is it was like a coping, a, a way to cope in, in some ways. Is that off base or? I mean, I wouldn't say there's definitely like truth in that. You know, for me, I think, uh, you know, when we were speaking earlier, it's having something to, for people with social anxiety, um, you know, having something to ground them in um just in where they are in the present without having to focus so much on like social interaction itself because that can be very intimidating but in terms of like inspiration I mean creativity and creative outlets have definitely been a big part of our own individual journeys you know Sarah um went to art school you know and even then went into marketing you can talk more about that shortly and but like even every year you would like hand design and hand make all of these Christmas cards even though you might have been like super busy um in, in your other positions and for me you know I've explored a lot of different creative mediums over the years um I started off by going to school for music business um so you know I, I learned to love to play drums and would um explore other instruments as well I've I've dabbled with uh, like graphic design, I've dabbled with photography and uh, like rug tufting. When you have those like machine tufting guns and it oh, like yeah, shoots the yeah. yarn through the rug, I've I've you know explored a lot of different creative outlets and have definitely learned how not even how good can they be as coping mechanisms, which they can be, especially with like my relationship with drums. It was an excellent outlet, but more so just like how important. Um, little acts of creative expression are to someone's overall well-being like it it adds this new level of fulfillment that you can kind of feel and it like I don't know it just it it brings something special to to your life on like a day-to-day basis to to be able to engage in various creative things yeah right and I think you know for like especially as adults it's you know we have like part of the reason it exists is like when we go out and we do something social it's usually eating or drinking you know there's not really a whole lot of options for adults and um and then also it's like as we get older and you know the self-judgment comes in and there can be a hesitancy to engage in something creative because like what if it doesn't turn out good am I going to be happy or even something new too Mm -hmm. like let alone creativity just we get afraid to do try new things and like put ourselves out there and creativity can be like a way to to engage in vulnerability a little bit Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's one of the reasons we have coloring on there. So, like, even people who are like, I don't know, I'm not creative, you know, to just, like, come in and do coloring. It really is, um, it's funny to, like, 
watch people like go kind of work like everyone comes in like I don't know you know if it's their first time I'm not sure what to do I guess I'll do this and then you see them soften and relax and so many people have just come up to us and like there was um guy who was like he just colored and and you know I was like I'm not sure if they're having a good time or not but then in the end he was like this is the most relaxed I've been in months and it's That's just cool. yeah a way to let go and the, the other day a woman was in here with um her grown daughter the two of them came in and we're both working with clay and by the end they were just um you know really chatty and and the mom told me that she had had a really rough week and that she really needed this and she feels so much better and i think it's just um we're so inundated you know we that we, we live in a very stressful time and then with our phones and everything and it's like we don't really get that break so doing you know when you just can spend like two or three hours just focused on i'm just gonna color this picture <laughs> you know yeah it's a way to just kind of reset i think mm-hmm. um and so it's great to see and like at christmas we had these activities where you could um, we had little cardboard gingerbread houses and people could decorate them and just pull things off of our craft buffet and I mean, it was just wild. Like you know, just a, you know, forty year old is just like totally in his own for like hours. Like I don't know, maybe I'll put you know cotton balls here, and then what am I going to do for the yard? And I mean, <laughs> there was just <laughs> had the best time. There was like one woman with in regards to the gingerbread house. There was like one woman who came back maybe like three separate times to work on her gingerbread house because wow. she was just so into like okay, like she had that she had like a vision and she just like she wanted to get it there. And I get it too. I started we had like a staff gingerboard house that I started working on. I was like, Oh my gosh, I want to do this for the rest of my life. (laughs) But, um, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's something just very meditative about, um, it, it, maybe not even necessarily art, but just being Mm -hmm. able to concentrate uninterrupted on something. Um, I, that's one of my big struggles is trying to just focus on whatever the task is at hand being able to just see it through to the end without having four or five different demands coming in from all different directions. And then yeah. I've kind of half-assed everything and I feel terrible at the end of it. You know, okay. it's like, well, I got it yeah. done. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think there's something to you about coming to a place that's like outside of your home, especially to do something creative. Cause it's like, now I got to get all this stuff and do I have the right thing? Do I have to buy more stuff? And then I got to clean it up and I got to put it away. And so, so you come into a place where you can just do your thing everything's here for you and then it's like there's other people and there's music and we have scented candles and it's just like you can just come into a space where you can just be without those outside interruptions or that added you know outside pressure like oh now I made a mess you know and I gotta clean it up da, da. that is one of the benefits like we do clean everything up so um which, which is surprisingly hard for some people to like allow us to do it's interesting there are some people that are like no I I on principle, I cannot just like leave this here for you guys to clean up. It's always interesting. Sometimes we have to like force people's hands and be like, "Stop that! Put it down." Yeah, one woman was like, "No, can I?" She was like, "Can I please wash these paintbrushes?" She's like, "It's really relaxing for me," and I was like, "Okay." <laughs> Yeah, it, I'm one of those types of people. Yeah. I, I we we were just on a, a trip and uh, I kind of pulled a muscle in my back on the way it, we were, went on a cruise ship mm. and I kind of pulled my muscle a little bit but I knew how to straighten out it was going to be fine but guy comes knocking at the door when I'm kind of doing my stretches and he's just got this big case of water and I didn't even think about it I was like oh thank you, you know, it, my back is still all wonky but he goes no sir you're on vacation and I'm like but this is weird you putting you, that's my water you're gonna put it in your <laughs> you know, it just it doesn't gel in my brain I'm yeah. like I, I'm perfectly capable but it uh, yeah I don't know what it is about accepting service that is weird for some people and I'm yeah. one of those people I don't know why yeah yeah I, you know I guess it's just we all you know nobody wants to be a bother and we're all you know take care of our own stuff and so but yeah I think there's times where it's good just to and I struggle with that too just to be like you know what I'll, I will just accept this gift yeah. <laughs> let someone clean up my creative mess <laughs> yeah well I imagine you guys are probably like that to some extent because it, I think most people who would be like that are the types that would open up a business like this mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. it's been open for six weeks and so have you guys uh, you know f- seen the the success like some fruits of your labor really kind of coming to pass and, and making this a hey this was a good idea 
Yeah, definitely. It's been, um, we're... Uh, both terrible at social media <laughs> for, for different reasons. reasons for different reasons yes. choose could do it I could but. do it I used to do it actually yeah. at my previous job in Philadelphia I worked at a music venue and ran the social media for there and then I just uh, learned to really uh, I I saw the downsides of social media and um really worked to distance myself from it for, for a while but now here we are with a, a new business where we need social media yeah, and it's, like, it's oh. harder for me to like okay focus on social media again prioritize that again and yeah mm-hmm. anywho anyhow um but you know i think what's been really exciting for us is and i and i have a 20 year career in marketing and i don't know it's just funny when it's like when it's your own business and there's so much to do it's you know the, what you focus on and how you spend your time your priorities kind of shift the point being that we've done very little really promote it and we've seen so much organic growth and it's it's very exciting and one you know as new business owners I, you know, we want to be successful and and um, to be able to sustain for a long period of time, be a good workplace for people. So, like on the business side, that's exciting. Like, okay, I think we might have something here, and it seems to yeah. be growing. But like, just on like the personal, the personal satisfaction of people seeing seeing people come in, resonate what we're doing, being excited about it, having these new experiences. And the fulfillment that that gives us of bringing something new to the community is really great. I um, grew up in Winston, lived in some other places, and then you know moved back. And I've been back about twenty years. And I we should mention Tuz is my kid, so yeah. this is a family business. Yeah. So right, it's it's very personal to us. It really is like an extension of our home, um, you know. And so like with Winston having grown up here, you know, I've had kind of like a a complicated relationship with it of when I was in high school and I left and I was like I moved to Atlanta I'm like I gotta get out of here it's too small a town and you know but now like I'm at an age where it's like you know what I want to contribute and there's so much creative energy right now and so much happening and it's an opportunity to be a part of it and you know so to see the community responding in a positive way and see so many different types of people coming in and enjoying what we're doing and benefiting from it it's um, extremely rewarding, and so we're yeah. we're really excited just to keep, you know, building and and pushing ourselves to bring new ideas and and you know and yeah, keep adding. Yeah, yeah, I've been really impressed with the way that uh, Winston has turned around a lot of the sort of rougher areas into a, a very positive place. Like this, where you guys are, used to be kind of iffy when I was growing up. I was telling Tuesday about that, yeah. that uh, my mom and stepdad used to have a, a textile warehouse a couple of buildings down. And, uh, yeah, we weren't really allowed to go too terribly far you know, off the reservation, so to speak, mm-hmm. um, because it, you just didn't know what was going to happen. And so it's kind of nice having Winston – push back in the direction to where you can have something like this and uh, i mean a distillery right across i honest to god i don't know how you guys don't stay constantly dr- i'd be over there drinking every day. <laughs> it would be unhealthy if i lived across from a brewery and, and a distillery. distillery i know i'd be done for and i love gin <laughs> <laughs> oh. it's like this uh, isn't good but uh yeah. good, it sounds like you have good self-discipline so yeah. good. Yeah. sometimes yeah sometimes <laughs> except for like maybe one night a week <laughs> <laughs> just finally kind of crack and you're like okay yeah. i've earned this <laughs> right. yeah, right. exactly. yeah. all right well uh okay with the uh, the background in marketing mm-hmm. and uh i'm sorry did you say you tuesday you went to uh went school to, of the arts no i went to school in philadelphia i went to school okay. at drexel university and studied uh music business up there what um, is music business is that it- is a good question um <laughs> Uh, it is essentially, um, so there's like a music industry program at Drexel University that kind of covers various aspects of the music industry, ranging from, you know, recording and production and all of that through like, you know, PR, marketing, management, and just kind of the back end of how the music industry works. Um, so I focus on the business side of things and, you know, that, that essentially entails like a business minor 
and then a bunch of added, um, you know, music industry and music specific courses kind of tagged onto it. So I studied that uh, in Philadelphia and then worked at a independent music venue for about two years. And yeah, that's, uh, I was, I was doing that while the pandemic started too. It was actually the mark of like my one year anniversary, almost to the T one year working there. Did we have an emergency meeting and cancel the shows for the following two weeks? Um, because it was, the COVID was just starting to really hit the news. Um, so yeah, I worked there for a couple of years and then ended up finding my way back here. Uh, after that, I've been back for about three years now. Okay. Two, two, two to three years. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Time is fuzzy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you work with any, uh, like famous people, famous bands, things like um, that? Um, so the music venue, it's called Warehouse on Watts. Amazing, uh, amazing venue. It was just a group of maybe like four primary employees that kind of ran the whole shebang. Um, I think one of the biggest, let's see. Well, for me, I had a moment. I grew up, one of my, it's like one of my very first favorite albums of all time. Um, I can't even remember the name of the the album itself, but, uh, Reese, an R&B artist, R-E-S. Um, I grew up listening to that. I had it on my little iPod and I listened to it in large, uh, long car rides, they did uh, the music venue ended up doing a partnership with Red Bull like an R&B something focused on R&B and um, I was outside like having a smoke break or something and then I hear like this song playing from the inside and like it clicks I'm like oh my gosh this is Reese I didn't know she was coming I didn't know she was gonna perform and I literally I like throw my (laughs) cigarette and I like bolt inside up the stairs and like Reese is just like you know behind this little DJ booth singing her song um but the music venue itself worked primarily uh catered a lot to like the electronic music scene and it was a hub for a lot of the sub genres and like the local electronic scene in Philly which is really cool you know, there are a lot of Burning Man individuals. Actually, one of the co-owners, one of the founders of the venue was a, a big, you know, Burning Man person. Um, but, you know, big DJs like uh, Chami, if you're, if anyone's familiar, <laughs> Chami was probably one of the biggest artists we had. That was, you know, uh, like an 800 capacity show, um, which was pretty, oh, wow. pretty big for, for the venue that we were. Um, you, we had a... Wild Night, it was like a, it was around a Pride, and it, we became like an official after party. Um, that was, that was pretty wild. That was another like 800 capacity show, but, uh, oh, we did something with, um, was it Mark Hoppus and his band these days? Oh. He performed there, I think. Um, so yeah, anyways. No, no, that's, that's actually kind of interesting. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I had electronic any kind of electronic music I know very, very little about. Yeah. But I'm assuming that somebody listening did get a kick out of yeah. what you just said. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> this is how my wife feels when I talk about doom heavy metal. I'm yeah. like, yeah. oh, wow, I can't wait for Monolore. And she's like, all right, whatever. <laughs> Don't know who that is. <laughs> but that's cool, though, because, yeah. you know, when you get to meet somebody – that's a big deal to you, even if it's not really that big of a deal to other people. It's mm-hmm. it's such a cool moment to be yeah. like, oh, it's like meeting, uh, it's like meeting a star. Yeah. It's it's so strange mm-hmm. to try and explain that. I still get kind of weird when I get a chance to meet somebody I've been listening to for a couple of years. Half the time, they're half my age. And I'm like, oh boy, I get yeah. to meet you. And they're looking at me kind of funny, like, well, you're excited to meet yeah. me? <laughs> you know? uh, but anyway, that was a little bit of a side. Um, <laughs> well, uh, tell me some of your background, well, like a little bit more about like your artistic background. You said you had marketing, mm-hmm. and uh, it, I think that's funny that you have a marketing background and you hate your social media. Yeah, that's, I know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, yes, so was a you know artist growing up and then wasn't really sure what I wanted to study in school so ended up going to art school first in Atlanta and that's where I met uh Tuz's dad and we eventually like moved uh, and that's where Tuz was born and that's where we eventually uh, we moved to Raleigh and I so I ended up graduating from Meredith College with um no mm-hmm. kidding yeah. that's my wife oh really she graduated in 98 oh my gosh <laughs> uh, well. okay well yeah I was that um, I was like I was 
I should have been there. That I graduated in two thousand. So yeah, we were there around. Oh the no, time. kidding. Yeah. Oh, y'all might have. That I know would be... she actually looks familiar to me. I know. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to compare notes. Next time yeah. Too. I'm sorry, um, but go ahead. Anyway, so. Um, but then I was like, okay, well, now what do I do with this art degree? And ended up getting um, interested. Because there was another part of me that enjoyed business and sort of that analytical side. So um, ended up taking a job at an ad agency in Greensboro. And um, I knew if, you know, if anyone's like around our age, I might remember Coinbeam. So, and it was actually on the um, business side, more of like the account management side versus doing like creative design work. And then I worked at Mullen, which is um, another large agency here in town. And then from there, I guess it was around 2010, no, it's seven, gosh. 2007? Seven. Oh, that's, I, wow. Yeah, I left Mullen to um, work for my brother-in-law, who had started Piedmont Distillers. And it's a craft distiller that makes Junior Johnson's Midnight Moon, and it was Cat Daddy Moonshine, and also have Methane Standard Vodka. So, and at that time, it was like five of us, and it was sold in like five states. And I became part owner and, you know, like really involved in the business. And then 10 years later, I left. And at that point, it was in like five countries, sold wow. internationally. It was a wild experience and and so much fun like from a marketing perspective getting to like create these brands and help build and foster them we did all sorts of cool events yeah i did a bunch of cool music yeah. uh sponsorships i remember some of those those are fun yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah um yeah probably the coolest one it was, it was like one of the last ones that we did too or that i did was um it was during south by southwest and electric lady studios was doing like hosting a um like per like a preview of different uh bands like i guess on the label or that recorded there or something yeah and they were looking for a liquor sponsor and so we came on and and the whole thing was being hosted at willie nelson's ranch Oh, that's awesome. I like outside of Austin. Oh, yeah. And so, yes. <laughs> yeah. So he has, so it's, I can't remember the name of the movie, but he was in like a movie like back in the 80s and he bought the film set. And so it's this weird like Western town, but it's all facade. So like half the buildings you can't, aren't even like safe to like walk in. <laughs> <laughs> it's all just like on the verge of falling down because it's not, you know, it's just built for a movie. It's an old movie set. Yeah. And like, yeah. you know, 30 years later, it's still there. But we took like the saloon and completely decked it out and had like just did all kinds of cool stuff. And we had a Junior Johnson who was an old bootlegger and like a NASCAR legend. And we had one of his old bootlegging cars from the 40s and like took oh, that out there. So cool. It was the coolest thing. I did not get to meet <laughs> Willie, but I did see him like through a window. He was sitting in one of the little rooms. Um, but it was, and actually oh, twos, you know, it was, I, I was, was like, I was like well, Maybe twelve or thirteen, and, and like, you couldn't have given less of a shit, could you? Well, <laughs> oh no! I was into like, it, oh really? Although I would have a much, much, much greater appreciation for appreciation for that experience now, yeah. but I was still into it. Like I wanted to go. I yeah, you knew enough to, to know this is really cool. Yeah, oh, that's and cool. shovels and rope, who I was really into mm-hmm. at the time, was playing there, and I got to meet them. Yeah, and so I think that was one of the one of the things that got me real excited back then but yeah. yeah I definitely wasn't able to comprehend the full scope of awesomeness that was this event but I still definitely appreciated yeah. it yeah. yeah it was just wild just sitting there you know, like with my kid like at Willie Nelson's ranch like l- listen to this people music drunk. like maybe yeah. and you're just like what <laughs> you know it's just it was very unique special experience. I would be so worried that the people I was getting drunk would start wandering through the set and then a, like a building collapses <laughs> on them <I> know. <laughs> wow shit that's my fault yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh I would love that because mm-hmm. I just I guess the idea of him buying an old movie set is the is just I don't know. I, that's what I would do if I had a bunch of money. That's oh, a yeah. cool idea. Yeah. yeah. I'm just like, there's a little Western town. It was like the middle of nowhere. I mean, it was maybe like 45 minutes outside Austin, but um, I think they were in the middle of a drought at the time too. So it was just like, it was like a dust bowl. <laughs> it was very wild. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever heard that? It, uh, this is a little bit topical, but um, that singer Toby Keith years ago, he had a song called 
I'll never smoke weed with Willie again. Oh. <laughs> so I was half expecting some story no, to come out. I, <laughs> I walked by Willie Nelson and I was curled up on a ball right. high out of my mind. I don't know yeah. why. <laughs> okay, well then what brought you, uh, so you were in Raleigh, and mm-hmm. so what brought you guys uh, back into Winston? Yeah, so my ex-husband and I they both found jobs here, and my family is all still here. So wasn't necessarily expecting to come back to Winston, but when we graduated college and had you know little twos, it just, it all made sense. So, and um, yeah, and then thought it, you know, we're going to move a couple of times and looked at, you know, almost moved to LA, almost moved to Nashville. And, you know, those things just didn't like come to fruition. But now I'm glad I stayed. I feel like this is where I'm supposed to be. And, you know, to be able to bring other experiences and someone who like knows Winston has grown up in Winston, but also, you know, has experienced experience like other, other places, places, right? You know, yeah. where maybe like a little bit of a fresh perspective in certain ways, or just you know, some yeah, new ideas. Mm-hmm. yeah. I see. That's one thing I, I kind of regret from my own personal life is I've never really moved too far away from here. I've I've been you know one or two little suburbs around here, but I've never mm-hmm. truly moved somewhere else. Uh, the reason being is because most of my family is here, so sure. I, I, I never really had much of an inclination to go away. But I do appreciate that that probably brought you guys a lot of experience when you opened Dabble Art Bar. Mm-hmm. Was that you know some of the ideas that maybe you've run through before and that you've seen succeed, some that you've seen fail, and, and, and that was probably really helpful in applying it to opening this place up. Oh, for sure, and you know, and also like Tuz's experience of living in Philly for seven years and working in live music, and then um, also working with a very small like team as well. I think it was interesting because like the music venue I worked at, it was very independent. It was very much an independent music venue. Venue. Yeah, we had four or five people, and we just kind of did, like, yes, we would book the big shows, and we would work with promoters to bring in DJs and artists and whatever, but we also did, like, random stuff just because we felt like it. You know, the owner, Gavin, would, like, host, like, Eagles watch parties and pull out, like, ping pong tables and, you know, bring up, like, a three-wheel and just, like, have his dog in there. Like, it was... There was a lot of fun had there. It was like an interesting way to experience yeah. fun in like a, a venue setting beyond just a, you know, you have concerts and live performances, right. but like experiment a little, mm-hmm. try something. And I think, you know, I have like similar experience in working, um, you know, at Piedmont Distillers. And like I said, like starting, it was, you know, as we got bigger, obviously the team grew, but starting with just like a really small team and trying to make something happen and testing this and trying that there's like a scrappiness to it yeah and um so like i you know in our own ways we both kind of bring that to the table and like you got to love it and you have to be willing to try and be like you know what okay that didn't work out as planned all right move on to the next and like how can we learn and and keep going and have some of that like experimentation built in yeah 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 and that does feel sort of like what you guys are doing in here like i'm looking right now at the uh the clothing rack and uh, i'm not gonna lie i have no idea what is that something you sell or is that something that you (laughs) paint on how do what what does the clothing do in here well yes normally when we're open it lives outside in the hallway because we don't really have a good place for it but um it's actually clothing that i designed and so in between dabble and uh piedmont distillers I had a women's clothing line. I, so I designed the clothes and then worked with sewers and pattern makers in LA to, you know, take the ideas and bring it to life. So um, that's where I got to spend a lot of time in LA and almost moved there. Um, anyway, so it's like I have, I've had all these clothes in storage. And so I was like, you know, I'm going to I'm like put them out for sale. So, um, you know, so it, yeah, so that's where the clothes are. They usually live out in the hallway. I might do something else with them. I do have ideas of embellishing or painting or doing some other things and giving them like a different sort of life. So we'll see what happens. But right now they just kind of chill in the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> Is that like something that you might possibly do in the future where you, you know, show how to do basic patterns and things like that? Yeah, I might. And there's all kinds of people, you know, like we have such a strong connection. Like you were talking about, you know, family with the textiles, like, strong connection here in town of of textiles and sewing and all kinds of things costume design costume design yeah. i think there's a lot of opportunity to bring some of that into dabble and i still have all the patterns um from you know this clothing line so i might 
and I still have a lot of fabric. So oh, yeah, a yeah. lot of fabric. <laughs> a lot of fabric. So there's like something there, you know. I think there's something that will come come out uh, when the time is right, and some different collaborations um, that you know we could we, we could foster and work with some folks in town, do some cool right cool activities. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, have you guys ever thought about like hosting, uh, you know, any kind of music events here or something like that, or would that be kind of a I think that I'm looking around, I'm thinking that might be a bit of a nightmare, but I'm anyway, yeah, I'll I mean, let you answer. We've you know, we will bring in uh DJs, musicians, you know, jazz trio in every so often. We want to do it a lot more regularly, but we'll get there. Um, you know, the space, we love it. It's been excellent. Like we've there's been so much evolution that has taken place through these, you know, four walls here and it's been wonderful. Um, it, but I personally would love to bring some more uh, live music experiences to Winston, especially because I do really love electronic music, and there isn't as much representation of that in the local music scene here. So, like, providing a platform for that and other artists, too, I think is definitely something we would like to do at some point. Um, but, like, for the time being, I think it's figuring out how do we how do we keep the art bar component integrated in with these other components such as live music or i don't know whatever else and like how can we push the the boundaries of like the art bar experience or the boundaries of of a live music experience and present it in something that's new and different which will just take you know trial and error and creativity yeah yeah you know doing something maybe a little more like collaborative or yeah. like interactive yeah 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 i've seen shows uh i believe joseph arthur is the guy i'm thinking of um and i think what he will do is he actually i think he paints while he sings oh. and i thought that was just kind of interesting yeah. and i think he sells it at the end of the show if you're interested and huh. I, stuff like that i find kind of fascinating because it, it yeah it's a it's a different level like you guys are saying it's like an interactive mm-hmm. type of an idea so i could see something evolving out of that kind of an idea where you've got people that are playing music creating art and yeah. like a collaborative idea and look here's the result of yeah. that and uh it's it's like more than a memory at that point you know it's like you've, you you have something very tangible that you took away and you can always touch that and be like yeah this was exactly what happened that night yeah. yes oh that's a really cool idea all right we'll have to we'll add that to our list <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> oh well just as a odd little aside tuesday um who's are, are there electronic bands or musicians around town that you would recommend uh i'm always looking to get in at the like the ground floor of music so i'm fascinated um (laughs) so in terms of what so you know i came from philly from a music venue where we had a lot of different electronic music going through there and so coming back moving back to winston I started having a craving for those similar kinds of, and it's not even just the specific music, it's also the crowd there as well. People's desire to move and dance, like really just there for the the ones and the twos, you know, and just like move in their body no matter what. Um, there, I need some more, I need to do some more exploring. I'm not the best when it comes to going out and trying new things, ironically. <laughs> ironically. <laughs> um, I don't know how active they are as of late, but there is a like group uh, based out of Greensboro called Strictly Social that I, I really enjoy. Uh, during the summer, they host these like daytime dance parties slash markets at, um, it's called Bodega in Greensboro. It's oh, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they do like brunch at the Bodega or something like that, I think is what it's called. So Strictly Social is really great. Um, also based out of Greensboro, uh, a group called Dance From Above. They have, you know, uh, monthly uh, electronic events there. I've not attended, but it. Uh, we've had one of their DJs come through here before, Alvin Shavers, who's really great, um, you know. So, yeah, and then you know, we're friends uh, with a, a guy named Spencer, Spencer Aubrey, that's his last name, right? Otherwise yes. known as uh, P.S. Etiquette. He's now doing stuff over with uh, Compound, if you've heard of it, the Compound downtown. I think of, I don't think so. Well, it's kind of like a, a gym membership, but for like artists or musicians. And they have like a recording studio. They do uh, events. They have like c- 
computer labs, things like that. And Spencer just recently, uh, I think he's one of like the co-owners over there as well. But Spencer's been in here DJing for us a few times too. Um, so yeah, I, you know, I think uh, the the scene is growing a little bit. There are some more, I've noticed some more events here and there. Um, but I definitely want to bring more to Winston. I would love to bring, you know, Strictly Social uh, to Winston sometime and have him do a dabble takeover. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, just, yeah. It's, if it all comes down, comes back to me, for me personally, about having fun. Yeah. Creating a space where people can have fun. Right. Like real yeah. fun. And be themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. This is a place where all are welcome. And, you know, that's been, that was one of our goals when we opened. And it's been really nice to see just the diverse groups of people um, who come in our doors and enjoy themselves. So you know, right. that's, that's really part of our mission is to have it be a space where you can come and be yourself no matter who you are and feel good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, it, it's just, I love the way that this place looks because I can only imagine what it was when it was a mill. Yeah. You know, and how much yeah. different this must be because you guys probably came in when it was still mill looking. I'm sure. Well, you? pretty much. It was. It was <laughs> the. Um, it was a kickboxing gym before, and it had a, like a hard like Fight Club vibe. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> there was no. There was one electrical outlet. There was like one bare bulb, like in the middle of the floor. <laughs> there was no heating or air. No lights. Um, there were some fans. There were like bars on the windows. <laughs> Man, this sounds more like a you know one of those interrogation rooms yeah. in a horror movie. <laughs> and and I hear from like the other um, like the neighbor business owners and the regulars that there there was a sweaty smell that wafted into the hallway. So everyone's very appreciative oh. of, of our scented candles and <laughs> and clean paint. It's a different yeah. vibe for sure. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of work put into mm-hmm. kind of making the space what it is yeah, that you see very, today. Very cozy. Yeah. How long did it take to, to get the space ready? <sighs> I mean, it was, you know, it evolved. It'd be one of the things where like, okay, and they're like, oh, you know what? Let's add this and let's yeah. add this. I mean, I mean, if, for like the cleaning, the painting, the sink, uh, I don't know, a couple months. Yeah. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. But then, you know, acquiring furniture about probably, you know, half the furniture we either already had or was like at our house. Then we brought it in here. Um, and, you know, layouts took definitely a lot more time kind of experimenting. And, yeah. you know, we started changing. And so we did a fairly big overhaul of the layout um, when we decided tr- to transition from House of Gertrude to Dabble. And, you know, we used to have the storage racks out to, like, you know, here. Yeah. And, but, yeah. Yes. It was, oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, a lot of purging. A lot of... A lot of purging. A lot of purging. We donated a lot to Reconsidered Goods. And, yeah. So I was using it storage. Like, I had, like, mannequins, like, stacked to the ceiling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The clothing line. And, you know, so it was like, you know, it's time to sort of, like, let go of the old and make room for the new. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of physical and emotional um, purging. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> well, I imagine that probably when you're opening a art bar that there's a lot of, I wonder if anybody would use this. And mm-hmm. so I guess it sounds like you kept a lot of stuff and nobody wanted to use it kind yeah, of thing. Oh, you know, that's, that's gotta like, be a, a growing pain. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like we would keep stuff or I would keep stuff and like, well, maybe I'll need, and then you go back and look a few months later, a few months later and it's like, okay, well now I don't. Yeah. And so it was, you know, that iterative process of thinking, well, I will use this. And then just saying, it's a better use of space to just turn this into like, that's where the sofas are, like our cozy little corner is yeah. then storing, you know, other goods yeah because it's probably like where you're writing sort of a fine line Mm -hmm. between hoarding and inventory Mm -hmm. you know and that's got to be tricky right yeah Yeah, well it just kind of came down to i think being honest with you know where we want to go with this and like committing to like okay yeah we have all of these different supplies that can be used for all of these different things but we are committing to dabble we the stuff in here is for dabble and dabble alone you know and uh, I think that was a process getting you know through being House of Gertrude for a year and House of Gertrude I think was just kind of it was a state for us to have a little bit of an identity not crisis but like exploration 
yeah. of what we wanted to be, especially in the relation to like, you know, the community or, or what have you. Um, and so, you know, with Dabble, it, it, we hit a crossroads. Of, it was like, okay, you know, we're, we're two feet in. We are full commit, full send um, with this Dabble stuff. And yeah, that was like one of the, the final purges. I'm sure there will, yeah. there will always be more purges, <laughs> but yeah. that was that was the last like, big one right. for sure. Yeah. Yep. And uh, well, I mean, when you're dealing with all that kind of stuff, I mean, I, I guess you're always going to have sort of an evolving identity on some mm-hmm. level. But mm-hmm. l- like what you said is that you, you have to mentally tell yourself, I'm committing to this because you know in two weeks you're going to be like, I shouldn't be doing this. I should bail out. What the hell am I doing? You know? <laughs> yeah. 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 We ha- we've definitely experienced yeah. uh, things like that yeah. too. It's, it's scary committing. Yeah. It's exciting. Like the, with like it dabbles was exciting. Like, you know, like switching the, the business model was exciting. It's also scary. You know, we're like putting ourselves out there for everyone to see and like what, you know, the inevitable fears of like, what if people reject us? What if they don't like it? What right. if we're not good enough? Like of that's, you have to face those to commit. Mm-hmm. And so I think, you know, yeah, I don't know. But we're here now. We, yeah. could, we, we have committed. We have committed. Oh, yeah. That's good. Well, what are some of the things that are going to be coming up in the future that you guys want to maybe get people excited about to maybe make some plans to come out and visit you? That's a, that's a very good question. We got a lot of stuff in the works. Um, we, you know, we can... We don't have like specifics nailed down. I would, you know, if people want to follow us on Instagram or subscribe to our newsletter and it's dabbleartbar.com or on Instagram, dabbleartbar. Um, so, you know, like at, when we lock things down and schedule things, we share it. But, um, you know, we will have some fun stuff, some fun specials coming up for spring and Mother's Day. Um so we're still working through the, what those are. We'll definitely have more live music. We're talking about looking into doing things um, like for singles, doing like singles nights and some different um, like art enhancers. Um, what are some of the other? It's the metaphysical oh, event. Yes. yes. We have um, uh, a, an event coming up in the end of April that's a merge of um, – like metaphysical like readings and then also doing an art activity along with that so it'll be it'll be a lot of fun we'll have some information to post about that soon if people are interested in that sort of thing um metaphysical like uh, palm reading yeah, type kind of stuff like, yes okay. doing like um like uh, tarot cards like oh, yeah, okay. yeah yeah like tarot card combining tarot card readings and different readings um there's uh three uh women who we're friends with and they each have different kind of like uh energy healing skill gifts, sets skill yeah. sets yeah yeah <laughs> so kind of bringing them in together they have a whole program planned and then along with that so you kind of you know like have the, have do some readings and and then make um some art inspired by it so oh okay. I'm, yeah i'm not explaining it very well we'll have more details listed <laughs> <soon>. <laughs> but it's going to be a lot of fun that i know for sure well, that's that's mm-hmm. actually a cool idea mm-hmm. because it, things like that, when they're fresh on your mind, they're so much easier to I- express in, in an artistic way. Oh, it, yeah. It's like, you know, when you reach back to a memory, there's always that sort of cloud of, of, of time that's kind of veiled mm-hmm. over the front of it. But mm-hmm. when you actually, it, it's like, oh, no, this happened five minutes ago. You can you know, really yeah, start getting like, into the meat of it. Yeah, and kind of just embracing the creative process as a meditative process. So it's like, okay, I just had this... It was like I've gone to different um, like cacao ceremonies or, you know, tarot readings and all these things. And you leave and you're just like feel relaxed or have like some sort of like, oh, I have a, like a new perspective on it. I'm like, I don't know what to do with that. Like, I guess I'll just go sit at home with the dog, you know, so it's <laughs> like here you are like in community with other people and be like, oh, you know what? Like, let me just kind of, um, you know, embrace this feeling and these ideas and see what comes out. So yeah. it'll be a fun little experiment. Okay, that sounds fun. Well, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll definitely keep up with that yeah. and uh, keep an eye out for that. My wife is; uh, she stays on top of a lot of that stuff way more than I do. So mm-hmm. I should probably say I'll wait for her to tell me about yeah. it, and then I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll pop in here with her. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, is there anything else you guys wanted to let people know about Double Art Bar, about you guys, and uh, you know anything that we didn't cover? 
know. I feel like I feel like we I think yeah. we covered it all. You know, yeah. we just encourage people, even if you don't, you know, decide to do an activity to come by and just check it out. Yeah. See how it feels. We do have a gift shop. Um, aside from the clothing, we've got uh, different jewelry, tie-dyed things, ceramic, ceramic stuff, scented candles, and it's vintage all vintage glassware, yeah, books, vi- other like toys or cards or yeah, it's all you know, artful. very eclectic. Yeah, very eclectic. All artful in nature, either from local artists or independent independent brands. So, maybe you want to just come and check that out, and you know, maybe find a unique gift and just see what we're about. You know, welcome. We'll, yeah. we come on in. We'll show you all the stuff, and maybe you hang out, or you know, maybe come next time. So. When uh, when are you guys open so people can swing by? Oh, yes. Okay, so we are open Thursday through Sunday, and um, it's 12 to 7 on Thursday, 12 to 9 Friday and Saturday, and then 12 to 7 again on Sunday. So, okay. Yeah, and that's all on the website, and I think it's on the Instagram. I think um, it's on the Instagram, too, yeah. The, the yeah, whatever. The bio. The bio, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, the website is dabbleartbar.com? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, yep. okay. Yep. Well, great. Well, Sarah, in two, Tuesday, yep. two, I'll call you both. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much for, for chatting with us, and uh, hopefully you guys will have great success, and uh, we'll hopefully you'll have a, a bunch of people running through here making great art, so it sounds like a good uh, good vibe uh, yeah. for everybody. Yeah, yeah thank you. Thank it's been you. a pleasure. Thank a delight. You. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thanks so much. So much. For us. <laughs> so that's going to do it for this episode of the Piedmont Triad Podcast. Go give the Dabble Art Bar some love by going to either www.dabbleartbar.com or go by and visit them at 840 Millwork Street in Winston-Salem. Also, make sure you go to the PiedmontTriadPodcast.com, where you can listen to recent episodes of the podcast, or you can also find our episodes on most podcast platforms, including Apple, Spotify, Spreaker, and others. And if you're in the market for some new rock and heavy metal vinyl, go to my web store at heavy-vinyl.com. Also, a big thanks to Matt Smith and the Cowboy Spankers for letting us use their song Not Tonight as the unofficial intro and outro music of the Piedmont Triad podcast. Also, a big thanks to my friend and artist Brian Falk, who does all of the artwork for the Piedmont Triad podcast. If you're in the market looking for some good commissioned local artwork, make sure to reach out to him at his email address, which is wellfalkena at gmail.com. Let me spell that for you. W-E-L-L-F-A-U-L-K-N-A at gmail.com. Well, fucking A at gmail.com. And big thanks to you for listening. Make sure you check out all of our old episodes, and we'll see you next time, Piedmont. She keep on moving. You like the devil when the sun goes down Stay away from me well, I'm too far gone There ain't nothing here to see babe. So you best just move along